The following is a world class bullshitters exclusive. You've no doubt heard that Marvel Studios have fired one of their longest tenured executives, Victoria Alonso. We covered that yesterday, so there's no need to rehash what you've already heard. But someone inside Marvel is dishing out some dirt, and it's interesting. There are allegations that Victoria Alonso is responsible for creating a toxic work environment. A toxic work environment is terrible no matter the field, but in the arts, it's a death knell. Creating a hostile environment creates inferior art, and well, the Marvel films have looked inferior for a while now. So let's hear what this other Marvel insider has to say. Victoria Alonso, co-founder of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and former president of physical and post-production VFX and animation at Marvel Studios, was reportedly behind the company's toxic visual effects work environment. According to senior reporter Chris Lee via The Direct, Alonzo was singularly responsible for Marvel's toxic work environment, a kingmaker who rewarded unquestioning felty with an avalanche of work, but who also maintained the blacklist that kept VFX pros wide-eyed with fear. He added that she held a crazy amount of power and that everyone in the VFX industry was quite scared of Alonzo. Prior to her departure on March 17th, Alonzo had been with Marvel Studios since 2006, beginning as the company's chief of visual effects and post-production, and ending as its president of physical post-production, VFX, and animation. While no reason has been given for her sudden resignation, it is possible that changes are being made internally at Marvel Studios after Phase 4 titles received criticism for unpolished visual effects. Other visual effects artists have called Marvel Studios their worst client, alleging the company overworks and underpays the VFX companies it hires. In addition to the VFX controversy, Marvel Studios received internal negative feedback regarding Phase 4's distribution and quality. In response, Marvel Studios have reportedly re-examined its upcoming slate with greater focus on quality over quantity, and it's expected the upcoming MCU projects will spend more time in the creative and post-production phases to ensure that both the story and visual effects are of the best quality. It's also stated that there will be more breathing room between MCU projects to prevent superhero fatigue in audiences. <laughs> Are you serious? While unconfirmed, this is reportedly why Secret Invasion and Loki Season 2 have seen their Disney Plus release date windows delayed into later 2023. So it sounds like this woman was on a power trip. You can't work the artists like that. They suffer. The art suffers. And your movies suffer. With that much money coming in, you'd think the environment would be better, but that's not the case. Earlier this year, former Marvel visual effects artists spoke out about the terrible experiences working with Marvel, and the results are disappointing. Because Marvel Studios has produced several blockbuster movies over the past decade, and are continuing to make superhero movies. Behind the scenes, behind all the fame, fan following, and money, are the visual effects artists who work day in and day out to make such extraordinary visual effects. While Marvel is known for their superhero movies and extraordinary plot designs supported by the best VFX artists, recent rumors have been coming that wages for those VFX artists are paid less than the industry standard. The VFX artists in the industry are said to be paid 20% less than the normal industry standard. There's also talks that the artists were overworked and understaffed to complete their tasks within a given time. Well, this is not the first time Marvel Studios has come under speculation for their treatment of their artists. Back in July 2022, a VFX artist who worked on two MCU movies previously said that he suffered under the company's pressure. He tweeted at the time saying, Working on Marvel shows is what pushed me to leave the VFX industry. They're a horrible client, and I've seen way too many colleagues break down after being overworked while Marvel tightens their purse strings. In a recent report made by an unknown artist at Vulture while working for Marvel Studios, they revealed that they were forced to work four times than what they were compensated for. The artist further added, The minute I deliver, movie name redacted, I'm never coming back. So due to these multiple allegations, Marvel Studios are now creating its own visual effects studio house. <laughs> But Marvel has officially not confirmed the decision, nor have they denied anything about this. Marvel has also refused to comment on these claims when they were reached out by Vulture. Now, Phase 5 has recently started, and the VFX houses will play the biggest role in these movies becoming top-grossing, record-breaking movies. So it comes without a doubt that for the artists to work properly and make the best visual effects, they have to work in a suitable environment. Other VFX artists working for Marvel also supported these rumors when, in an interview with Gizmodo, he shared, The worst was when Avengers Infinity War and Endgame were coming out. They actually bumped up the release by a month and they hadn't told us. I remember being on the floor with my team and one artist comes to me and says, Hey, have you seen this? And he shows me the article saying Marvel bumped the release up by a month. The studio claimed they forgot to mention it to their VFX team and that they had moved up the release date by a whole month. Since the next movie will heavily rely on artists, they will need to treat their artists right. So unity among the company and its VFX team is a must. Marvel was truly mismanaged under Victoria Alonso. 
It's incredible to think that the VFX team relied on the news to learn of the update. That decision shows Marvel's true nature. They don't care about the people making these films, and honestly, they don't care about their working conditions until the films suffer and Marvel loses money. That's where they are right now. Phase 4 was an unmitigated failure. Each film perplexed fans with their ugly visuals and disappointing presentations, and Victoria Alonso was the woman in charge of it all. There are people calling her a scapegoat, but with the new information adding details to Marvel's nightmarish workload, it seems almost fair to assume that she was the issue. People have wondered why she was there for so long, and some believe it was because she was the face of Marvel's progress initiative and put identity politics at the forefront of the brand, a decision that's led to declining profits for the MCU. No matter the decision, Victoria Alonso is no longer at Marvel, but it's far too early to see any change coming anytime soon. After Phase 5 wraps up, we may finally see an increase in quality. Or we may never see another Marvel movie again. Who knows? So folks, I want to know what you think about this. Now that we're getting more information about the nightmarish work environment, it all kind of makes sense. Why do these Marvel movies look ugly? Why are the visual effects artists so upset? Why are they not getting the information? Why are they not being paid? Oh. Well, the president of all of this stuff is the president of all of this stuff. And we always go for the top. You don't blame Joe Blow, you, you blame the boss. And Victoria Alonso was a powerful woman. And I stress, was a powerful woman. Hopefully the Marvel movies look better. Hell, Marvel movies from 10 years ago look better than the ones from today. I'll take Guardians of the Galaxy Part 1 over Ant-Man Part 3 any day of the week in terms of visuals. And that, that's reverse. We're supposed to be moving forward with this. The movies are supposed to look better, be better, in every way, facet, and form. But we're just kind of stuck on the past. Not because it's us, it's them. They haven't made anything good in a while. But I digress. So folks, thank you for watching. I got three questions for you today. One, do you believe that Victoria Alonso was this nightmarish queen bee to work for? Two, do you believe that Victoria Alonso was the reason why the Marvel visual effects suffered? And three, do you think it's going to get better now that she's gone? I made the video, you know my stance, but I want to know yours, so I'll be checking the comments down below. Well, folks, thank you for watching. Hit that thumbs up button to let us know that you enjoy the content. It also helps YouTube know, and it makes us more searchable in the index. Welcome to all of our new subscribers. We keep on growing. And folks, if you want to come hang out with us, join us at the WrestleMania Fan Meetup next week. I'll play the video at the end of today's video so you can get all the information, but we're going to be hanging out and getting pizza on the beach on that first day. The second day, we're going to Universal Studios where we're going to hang out all day, check out the new Nintendo World, and just have an amazing event. And Saturday and Sunday is WrestleMania, so meet us at SoFi Stadium, come out, pregame, tailgate, make it a memorable event that we probably won't remember because we won't be sober. So folks, thank you for watching. I'll be back next time with more, but in the meantime, be smart be safe, be cool, but always be excellent to each other. Thanks for watching today's video. Yes, it's over, but don't cry because there's more, a lot more from World Class Bullshitters. And there's only one way to get it. Hit that subscribe button below. When you do that, you'll get notifications and updates from World Class Bullshitters every time we go live. Basically, you won't miss anything. And if there's one thing I hate, it's FOMO. But the thing most people hate more than FOMO is fear of missing out on World Class Bullshitters because there's just some things you can't undo. So folks, do yourselves a favor and never miss anything from World Class Bullshitters. One last thing before you go, hit the thumbs up button. Not for our egos, no. They're big enough as this, but it does help us fight the algorithm here and well, it's man versus machine, and that's the real fight. But if that's not your battle, that's okay. There's one last way you can help WCBS, and that's going over to shopwcbs.com, picking up a t-shirt, a beer glass, a sweatshirt, a poster, all sorts of ways to back WCBS. The difference between us and other YouTube channels is I'm the artist that makes all this stuff, so if you enjoy art beyond t-shirts, you can even read our comic books. We got it all. We're called the epitome of pop culture for a reason, and no, again, it's not for our egos. So folks, make sure you're involved with every aspect of world-class bullshit. Not just for us, but do it for yourself. We're making the change in entertainment everybody out there wants to see. And a special thank you goes out to all of our wonderful patrons who make this content possible. Go to patreon.com slash worldclassbs to get involved and help out the channel. Attention all wrestling fans! Get ready for the ultimate fan experience at the WCBS WrestleMania Fan Meetup in Los Angeles, California from March 30th through April 2nd. This event will bring together the biggest event in wrestling and your favorite podcast, as well as diehard fans from all over the world. 
This is the perfect opportunity for fans to connect and celebrate their love of the sport as well as their love of us. So mark your calendars, grab your tickets, and get ready to suck it and join us live. Don't miss out on the ultimate fan experience of the WCBS WrestleMania Fan Meetup Weekend in LA. And if you're not a wrestling fan, there will be other YouTube creator events, including a trip to the brand new Super Nintendo World at Universal Studios. So listen to World Class Bullshitters Live for more updates and for more information, email worldclassbs at mail.com. The best mail.com, jabroni.